Hi everyone! This video is a study of the toxicity of ecstasy on hypothalamic neurons. I hope you find this video interesting and informative. MDMA, also known as ecstasy, is a synthetic, illegal, psychoactive drug that is part of the amphetamine class of molecules. MDMA stands for 3,4-methylene-dioxymethamphetamine and is often referred to as E or X as street slang. This is a widely used recreational drug that must be created in a laboratory setting, whether professional or not. MDMA is used by recreational drug users for its mood-altering effects. It's known as an empathogen inactogen, meaning that it enables the user to be better, better able to feel empathy towards others, communicate more openly, and causes the user to have feelings of euphoria. It is being studied as a potential therapeutic to treat post-traumatic stress disorder and anxiety. MDMA is most often sold in pill form, therefore oral intake and gastrointestinal route of exposure will be the focus of this video. An MDMA user does not generally feel the effects of the drug until about 30 minutes after oral intake, as the drug needs to be absorbed, distributed throughout the body, and then allowed to exert its effect on the target cells or organ. An ecstasy tablet will, will dissolve in the stomach, causing the dissociation of the acidic salt that is added to the naturally nonpolar amphetamine derivative, releasing the pure form of the drug into the stomach. The MDMA molecule is quite hydrophobic, as it contains mostly nonpolar functional groups and has a log POW of 1.86. The pKa for the strongest basic group is 10.14, giving the molecule a positive 1 charge at physiological pH. It is thought that MDMA is absorbed into cells by simple transcellular diffusion due to its hydrophobic nature despite the 1 plus charge, as well as through the use of the transporters. Serotonin transporters, called SERTs or SERTs, have been shown to be expressed in the human intestine. These transporters can facilitate some of MDMA's passage across the enterocytes as well. From here, the drug enters the hepatic portal vein where it is taken to the liver. Some MDMA is metabolized into an inactive form as the dose passes through the liver on first pass, but most of the drug is transported to the heart via the inferior vena cava and then through systemic circulation into the brain. Here it can cross the blood-brain barrier, again by simple diffusion or through the use of CERTs. MDMA affects almost all areas of the brain, which leads to the classical behavior and physiological changes associated with ecstasy intake. However, for the purpose of this video, the target is the hypothalamus. The drug diffuses to this small, almond-sized compartment, which is extremely important as it links the nervous system to the endocrine system. MDMA does not spend much time outside of distribution. Almost the entire drug dose is passed quickly to the brain. The main metabolic pathways of MDMA have been elucidated and over a dozen metabolites of the drug have been identified. Some are shown here. MDA, DHA, DHMA, HMMA, and HMA. MDMA is primarily metabolized in the liver by demethylination, then further conversion of the resulting catechol metabolites by methylation, glucuronidation, and sulfation before being excreted. The methylation of the catechol metabolites, DHMA and DHA, are specifically facilitated by catechol O methyltransferase, giving HMMA and HMA. Additionally, N-dealkylation occurs to degrade the side chains. In a study using rat liver microsomes, it was found that the main enzymes involved in MDMA metabolism is the CY2D, CYP2D sorry, subfamily of cytochrome P450 enzymes. Subsequently, it was shown that CYP2D6, a human homologue of this enzyme subfamily, demethylates MDMA in a recombinant E system. Due to the lack of study on human liver microsomes, it is likely that many other enzymes which have not been identified participate in the metabolism of ecstasy as well. These actions of metabolism, mediated primarily by CYP2D members, causes the MDMA molecules to be converted into metabolites that are more hydrophilic than the parent molecule. The metabolites, particularly HMMA and HMA, are excreted in the urine as conjugated glucuronidide or sulfate metabolites. The metabolites mentioned, as well as the parent toxin MDMA, are all excreted in the urine 
whether in a free form or as a glucuronidated or sulfated metabolite. A relatively recent study examined the excretion of MDMA in healthy users. Each volunteer was given a 1.6 mg per kilogram dose of the drug. After 24 hours, 30-34% to 34 of the total MDMA plus MDA, HMMA, and HMA was excreted in the urine. Interestingly, it was found that HMMA excretion continued for 33 hours longer than MDMA excretion, suggesting that HMMA is metabolized and excreted at a slower rate than the parent toxin. This leads to concern regarding the effects of HMMA. Does it have the same effect on neurons that MDMA does? Is its persistence within the system as detrimental, less detrimental, or more detrimental than MDMA? Researchers are still looking into the toxicity of this metabolite. Some studies say that HMMA might even be more toxic than MDMA itself. However, further study is needed on this topic, and for now, we'll stick to MDMA being the parent toxin, effector toxin, and ultimate toxicant all wrapped up, to, wrapped up into one. However, it is important to recognize that these metabolites could potentially exert mechanisms of toxicity as well. MDMA and its metabolites were found to be fully excreted in the study as early as 47 hours after intake and up to 131 hours after the intake of that drug. As previously mentioned, ecstasy can affect a vast number of areas within the brain, leading to a host of psychological effects. However, its effect on the neurons of the hypothalamus is of particular interest. The hypothalamus synthesizes trophic hormones which are released and either stimulate or inhibit hormone production in the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus is responsible for maintaining thermal regulation and controlling hunger, thirst, and fatigue, amongst other things. In the brain, MDMA can diffuse into the synaptic clefts of neuronal connections. It blocks the transmission and uptake of key neurotransmitters, primarily serotonin, but also dopamine and noradrenaline. MDMA binds to the serotonin transporters of the presynaptic cell, resulting in the transporter's inhibition. Usually, a synapse would release excess serotonin into the cleft. Any of the neurotransmitter that is not taken up by the serotonin receptors of the postsynaptic cell are generally reabsorbed by the uptake serotonin transporters of that releasing neuron. When molecules such as MDMA are present, the function of the transporters are blocked and serotonin builds up in the hypothalamic synapses, which essentially depletes your stores of serotonin after prolonged use. This causes the depression and panic attacks that some users experience after taking ecstasy. MDMA also causes an increase in dopamine levels within the prefrontal cortex in a similar inhibitory manner. The increase in free serotonin levels causes the subsequent amplification of oxytocin and vasopressin released by the pituitary gland, as these two centers are intrinsically linked. Oxytocin causes the feel-good, touchy-feely attitudes of MDMA users. Vasopressin, a hormone that controls thirst and water retention, is transported to the nephrons, where they stimulate aquaporins to reabsorb water. Vasopressin also promotes the action of drinking. On top of the loss of thermoregulatory control that comes with MDMA use, this combination of drinking excess water and having increased internal body temperatures can be quite detrimental and problematic. One risk with taking MDMA is the potential for hypothermia and hyponatremia. Hypothermia generally occurs due to the lack of thermoregulatory hormones as suppressed by the serotonin release, as well as the generally, general accompaniment of a hot, packed dance floor and nonstop body movement that's associated with MDMA use. If serious enough and untreated, this hyperthermia can lead to organ failure and potentially death due to denaturation of proteins. The stimulation of vasopressin, especially when accompanied by excess water drinking in an attempt to combat hyperthermia, can lead to hyponatremia, a condition defined by an abnormally low level of sodium in one's plasma. This can lead to an influx of water into neurons due to the osmotic balance, causing the brain to swell. If left untreated, this can progress until the brain presses down onto the spinal column, potentially resulting in death as well. Long-term effects of ecstasy use include memory damage and a reduced level of serotonin. Animal studies have shown that two weeks after repeated ecstasy use, 
two doses a day for four days straight, serotonin levels in the serotonin-releasing neurons of the hypothalamus are significantly reduced. Even seven years post-treatment, the experimental monkeys had reduced serotonin levels, as you can see from this picture. Reactive oxygen species are believed to be one of the causes of neuron damage and chronic MDMA toxicity. In conclusion, the use of ecstasy causes acute behavioral and psychological effects such as euphoria, lack of fear or rejection, and friendliness, but can also lead to depressive lows and hyperthermia and hyponatremia on occasion. Chronic effects such as an overall serotonin decrease in the brain, nerve damage, and, and memory loss as well. The therapeutic potential for MDMA is being hotly discussed with the prospective treatment of PTSD in soldiers as well as anxiety in cancer patients. Although ecstasy is a widely used drug, especially in the teen and young adult dance scene, it is important to weigh both the benefits of its use as well as the risks associated with it. This is a toxic molecule and is important for users or potential users to know the facts.